Hi guys. So he, as promised, here's my video on the review questions number 10 and 11, which have to do with the rate problems. I realized during third period I, I was doing it correctly, but I kind of freaked myself out a little bit because I went to check the answer on Savas and it was different than what I was getting. And that's because Savas changes the question numbers when you re-pull up the review. <laughs> uh, so not realizing that, I told you guys I was doing it wrong and kind of freaked out. But I want to show you guys how to do these problems correctly now. So here we go. So we have a clerical worker. Okay, and that's talking about how it takes her three times as long to finish a job as an executive secretary. And then over here it says working together, it takes them four hours to finish the job. And then it says how long would it take just the clerical worker working alone to finish the job. So that's going to be our X. So, so what I want to do is do kind of like an overall picture. All right. So we have the clerical worker and we have the executive secretary. And then we have the total because, well, they're working on it together as a group. So the work that the clerical worker does plus the work that the executive does should equal the total amount of work that's done. So when we have a problem like this where they're talking about different rates and then a comparison of their rate together, what we're actually going to be doing is we're going to be creating a rational equation. So I know that I'm going to have two fractions added together and it's going to equal another fraction. And the kind of tricky part is actually setting up, um, kind of setting up the expression. So with my fractions, understand that the top part is the amount of work being done. Okay, it it could be, um, you know, the number of tasks or how many times they fill up a swimming pool or. I don't know, just, just whatever amount of work needs doing. And then here in the bottom, this is going to be the amount of time. And the reason why is we're adding together the two rates that are happening to find the total rate. Alrighty, so now this means that all of my numbers on the bottom are going to be in regards to the amount of time that it takes to do things. So, for example, in this red part of the question, it says, how long would it take the clerical worker working alone to finish the job? So that's the amount of time for the clerical worker. We don't know what that is. Now, understand the executive person here also only has the same amount of time. So I'm going to go ahead and put an X there for the executive as well, just because they, they only have a set amount of time. Now, on this green part, it says that working together, it takes them four hours to finish the job. Alrighty, so now let's talk about the tops of these. So the top is the amount of work. Okay, so there's only one job. And so it's going to take a total of one unit of time. Now, here's where kids get messed up usually is in this blue part. So it says that the clerical worker takes three times as long to finish a job as it does for an executive secretary. So that means that our clerical worker is really slow. All right, she's like that sloth from that one movie. All right, so the numbers that I have that I'm going to put here, I'm going to put the three with the executive because she's faster and then put a one here for the clerical person because they're doing the entire job. So in the time that it takes for this clerical person to do one, the executive person has done it three times in that same amount of time, which is the X. So now that we have our equation, now we're going to go ahead and we're going to multiply to get rid of these fractions, right? Because fractions really stress us out. So the thing that I'm going to multiply by is called the lowest common denominator. So I'm looking at the bottoms of the fractions and multiplying by whatever will cause them to cancel out. So these ones have X's, so I'm going to get an X in there. 
And this one has a 4, so I need to put a 4 in there for my LCD. Alright, so now I'm going to go ahead and distribute. So 4x times 1 over x, the x in the numerator and the denominator cancel out, leaving me with 1 times 4, which is 4. For my second term, I have an x in the denominator and an x in the numerator, those cancel out, and that leaves me with 3 times 4, which is 12. And on this third one, the 4 in the bottom and the 4 in the top, they cancel, leaving me with 1 times x, which is 1x. And our last thing to do, just solve for x, so I add those together. So it would take the clerical worker 16 hours to finish the job alone. Now understand, when we get an answer, what we need to do is we usually need to plug it in and make sure that um, everything's working the way that we intended it to work. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a little check step here. Because you don't want to check, or you want to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Okay? So I'm plugging in the 16. So I have 1 16th plus 3 16th is equal to 1 4th. Well, here, 1 16th plus 3 16th is 4 16th. And if I reduce that, 1 4th does, in fact, equal 1 4th. So we are good to go. That actually worked out. Now question 12, question 12 is talking about a hose and they're, they're filling up a goldfish pond. Now as a person who has a pond in my backyard, I'm going to point out 18 minutes to fill it in is kind of ridiculous. That means that hose one is like a super powerful hose, just so you know. The second hose probably kind of sucks if I was going to guess. So let's check this out. So we know that if we add together hose 1 and hose 2, we'll get some kind of total. And because it's a rate problem, we know that we're going to have the three fractions. So hose 1 can fill in that goldfish pond in 18 minutes. So that's one pond, 18 minutes. Together, the two hoses can fill the same pond in 14 minutes. So again, that the amount of work that's being done is that one pond, and it's happening within 14 minutes. And so now what we're trying to figure out is how long does it take for the second hose to fill the pond alone? So the, the second hose, if we're just filling it in just by itself, divided by the amount of time, which we don't know. So there's our problem. Now what I did with my students in class was I showed them a little bit of a, a trick. I wouldn't, well, I wouldn't call it a trick, but it's another way instead of finding the LCD in order to simplify this. Because trying to find a least common denominator between 18 and 14 is a little bit of a train wreck and we have enough of that here in 2020. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go piece by piece and I'm going to multiply by each denominator until I no longer have any fractions. So instead of worrying about an LCD, I'm just going to multiply this bad boy by 18. And let's look at what happens. So 1 18th times 18 is just 1 because the 18s cancel. 1 over x times 18 is 18 over x. And 1 14th, that's 18 fourteenths. Okay, because that times. Now you can reduce that fraction if you want to make your numbers smaller, but I'm lazy and not really going to worry about it. So notice that that first fraction is now a whole number and I don't have to freak out. So I'm going to do the same thing with our yellow stuff. So I'm going to multiply by the denominator, which is x. So 1 times x is x. 18 over x times x, the x is cancel, giving me 18. And here the x kind of just globs onto the 18 to become 18x. 
All right, so now I have two fractions that are no longer fractions. So I'm going to go ahead and do it again, but now with the 14 to get rid of my third ugly fraction. So it's, it's a little more work because I'm distributing, distributing, distributing. But I think that it's less mental work than, um, you know, than having to go through and actually uh, find the LCD because that's kind of nuts with those numbers. So, so if you're more comfortable with this way than hunting down your LCD, it's just another tool in your tool bag to make sure that you know what you're doing. All right, so here I, I just distributed the 14, so I had 14x. 18 times 14 is 252, and the 14's canceled on this one. Now there aren't any fractions, and this is an easy-peasy Algebra 1 problem. So I'm subtracting the 14x's because we need all our x's onto one side. And then I'm going to divide by 18 to get x alone. I go to my handy dandy calculator that means that my x value is 14. No 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 shame on me missy. 18 minus 14 is an 18. Get yourself together. So 18 minus 14 is 4 and so that's what I'm dividing by is 4. So 252 divided by 4 gets me 63. So it would take 63 minutes to fill for the second pond or second hose to fill up the pond by itself. See, so that's a much slower hose than the first one. The first one is mm, takes like less than a third less time, which is nice. So there we have it. There's um the review questions 10 and 12 to help out. Later, guys.